We're ready for number eight. We're going to matrix the tag mitzvahs according to the human anatomy, Sefer Haredim. So Sefer Haredim covers the mitzvahs which apply nowadays. Tag mitzvahs is all 613. So we're not going to do all 613 right now, but I, I just pulled out a whole load of, of mitzvahs and we're going to figure out which part of the body is that mitzvah done with. Oh, no Hashem, where does that take place? The mitzvah of the Munah. Oh, that's in your brain? Very good. Uh, let's put that in your mind. Nothing else is, exists except Hashem. Oh, that's also in your mind? Okay, so that's mitzvah. Hashem is one. Oh, Shema Yisrael Hashem Makinu Hashem Echad. You say it with your mouth, but the mitzvah is to know Hashem is one. Where does that take me? Oh, it's in your mind? Okay, so should we put that there? Avas Hashem. Oh, it's also in your mind? Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of mitzvahs of your mind. Actually, I'm doing this deliberately because there's 51 mitzvahs that are tali believe, which depend on your mind. And it's, it's really significant when children start to realize, if we were to do all 613, they start to realize, oh, which parts of my body has the highest pile? And realize, oh my gosh, so many mitzvahs depend on what I'm thinking or what I'm going to do with my mouth, as we're going to see in a few moments. Oh, Yeras Hashem. Yeah, these are some of the six Mitzvahs Tadiris, they're constant. Um, listen to the Navi MS. Ooh, that's with your ears. Very good. Chaim, you got it. You said it straight away. Avas Yisrael. Oh, yeah, okay. That's another mitzvah that starts with your mind. If you were doing a kindness, and you're, you're doing a kindness, so that's the mitzvah. It starts over here, but you're doing it with your hands or you're running to help someone. So you could, you could put it by the legs, you could put it by the arms. But you're right, it starts over here. It's a mitzvah of the mind. To love a ger. Oh yeah, to love a ger. That's a mitzvah of the mind. Okay. It might be manifest in what you do with your hands or running to help him. Um, don't hate another Jew. Oh my gosh. Still mitzvahs of the mind. Uh, to give toichacha. Oh, so usually you do that with your mouth. Oh, so put that right by your mouth. Okay, very good. The mitzvah of inu lalim. Don't upset or hurt the feelings of a yasim and almana, a widow or an orphan. Oh, so that's, that would be with your mouth. Oh, it's like bullying or saying nasty things. Oh, so we'll put that over there by the mouth. Very good. Uh, Rechilus, Nashon Hara. Oh, okay. That's also with the mouth. Let's put that over there. Lil Moed Ulamid. Oh, to learn Torah. So how do you learn your Torah? Which part of your body? Oh, you do that with your mind. Very good. We could put there. Oh, you do it with your mouth. Oh, all right. You're right on both. It's very close, both in your mouth and in your mind. La say to do. Oh, so uh, it could really go in either of those two. We'll put it by the mouth. Oh, this one is to give cover to those who learn Torah. Oh, so here he's standing up. So you might want to you put that by the legs or if he's going to run to do a mitzvah. So we'll put that right over here for now. Oh, don't make a tattoo on your arm. On your arm. Ka, ka. Ooh, okay. Um, I guess you do that with your hand. Yeah, so if, if you are actually tattooing someone with your hand, your eye on that, I'll say. So we'll put that over here. Okay, the mitzvah of teshuva. Ooh, that's a biggie. Yeah, it's a mitzvah of the mind. Correct, it starts there. So that's a mitzvah of the mind. The mitzvah of tefillah. Oh, so you can dive into Hashem in your mind, but it's mostly done, but pair with your mouth. Okay, good. So it goes over there. Oh, the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim. Well, it's, it's done with your hands, but you have to say the bracha. So where do you want to put it? So Chaim might say, let's put it over there. Shlomo might say, let's put it by the mouth. We can put it where the child says, and then we'll say, you know what? we're going to check later if we've got it right, or if there's um, other parts of the body that this is actually performed by. But uh, essentially, it's, uh, it's really the mouth that, that the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim is done with. Um, and then there's the action of the hand. So you might even argue it's really both. Okay, mitzvah of Tvinshel Reish. Oh, so let's move these clearly on s inside the brain. This is by the ear, and this is going to be on top of the head. Good. Tfilin shel reish. Tfilin shel yad. Well, that's easy enough. Let's put it on his left arm over there. The mitzvah of mezuzah. Oh, yeah, you, you nail that to the door with your hand. So we'll put that over there. Uh, writing a Sefer Torah. I guess that's with your hand. Oh, very good. Uh, king has to write a Sefer Torah. Yeah, that goes over there. Uh, the, wear, the mitzvah to wear tzitzit. Oh, so that has to cover most of your front and back. So we're going to put that, I think we'll put it on the chest. Now we'll be clear that that's to cover the body. Okay, the mitzvah of Birkas Amazon. Oh, you say that with your mouth? Okay, very good. Don't hold back from giving charity to a poor person. Oh, so you, you want to put that in your hand? Okay, we'll add that to the hand there. Giving truma gadayla to the kayan. Oh, that's with your hand? Okay, very good. Don't eat truma. 
Yeah, a zar, that's a non kayin, it's not allowed to eat truma. So where should we put that? Oh, on your mouth. Okay, fine. So that's a mitzvah of the mouth. And there's a lot of mitzvahs of the mouth with all the machala uh, sasuras, all the forbidden food. So that pile is actually going to get quite big. Lahalvais, to lend money. Oh, that's a mitzvah to lend money to the poor. She'll put that in, in the, one of the hands. Okay, very good. Oh, you want to put it in the right hand because the right hand is stronger? Okay, very good. I like that. Lahaid, to give. Uh, testimony in court. Oh, you do that with your mouth? Very good. Don't go back to Mitzrayim. Oh, uh, that's with your legs. Okay, we'll put it on the other leg there. And this one says, um, to remember what Amalek did to us. So that's actually said out loud, that's with your mouth. And don't forget what Amalek did to us. Oh, that's in your mind. Very good. Don't uh, retreat at the time of battle. Oh, you do that with your legs? Okay. There's a separate mitzvah not to be fearful of your enemy, but that would be in your mind. So uh, we obviously haven't done all the mitzvahs, so we can't get a statistical analysis based on this. You could say what we know so far, um, but this would be interesting if you want a child to try and figure out over a period of, of days or weeks, going through tarag mitzvahs, laying out which part of the anatomy they've done with, and if you want, he can even write his own report or make a list himself. Uh, we can provide you with a list of all Tariq mitzvahs, but I wouldn't want you to look at it l'chat I would rather uh, the children figure this out themselves, and then they go to the chart that we can provide for you uh, to identify how accurate they are. Um, on many of the mitzvahs, like we mentioned with Birkas Kahanim, it's mostly tolly in your mouth, but it's still done with the hands as well. So that's a way to matrix the mitzvahs based on the anatomy of the human body. I went through this a little bit uh, quickly, I apologize. You can be much more deliberate and have a discussion uh, depending on the time and the appropriateness of uh, each mitzvah with the kid. But you can start them off with even less than I did with you. Um, and then the child is really on their own to go figure it out themselves. And they might come back to you with um, one or two cards saying, I don't know which part of the body. So you can tell them, you know what, make a separate pile of the mitzvahs you're not sure of. And then uh, we'll go through that whole pile together and try and figure out where can we find the answer, which part of the body is it done with? Because it seems it can be done with your mouth or it can be done with your mind. Like learning Torah, it could be done with your mind or it should be done with your mouth, or which, are, which is the most important of the two. So uh, this is number eight, matrixing the Tariq mitzvahs according to the anatomy of the human body. Number nine, miscellaneous matrixing. That's what I call it. We're going with the Rambam. We're learning two, three mitzvahs every day. In some cases, maybe it's only going to be one, maybe four. Uh, but you're, you're going to do every day another mitzvah, two or three, add on each day. And each day you're going to do a quick chazar of everything you know till now. It doesn't take as long as you would imagine, especially if you're just doing the code word and if you're doing routine and ritual on screen with the mitzvahs rotating every morning, going through them very quickly. If the children are watching the animations, it's going to reinforce it. Kids are doing the materials, they're learning which mitzvah am I cards, etc. But uh, here's where I find it very exciting. Uh, you've got kids who've got different interests. So you could have a kid um, who's like Harry Potter mad. I actually had this in one particular classroom. I was asked to consult with a particular kid. Uh, so I went to the kid to, went into the classroom to observe and there was a child at the back of the class who was reading a book. So, and he was not participating in the classroom at all. It happened to be at the time they were doing tag mitzvahs as, a, as part of the, the daily schedule. And I sat down with the boy, I'm not going to say his name, and he was reading Harry Potter. So I asked him, oh, oh uh, what are you reading? He says, Harry Potter. I said, oh, which volume? So, why should I care? So he told me he's in the fourth volume. So I asked him if he's finished the whole, all seven. So he said, yes, he's, he's, he's on his third reading. So I said, oh, so I can ask you who, who's your favorite character. And we got discussing about who, I was just trying to build rapport. I told him who my favorite character is, he told me who's his. And then I said, you know what, um, are you interested in Tariq Mitzvah? He says, no. I said, uh, okay, um, are you interested in magic? Okay, I figured that's not a, not a difficult question for him to answer. So I asked him, you know, how many mitzvahs in the Torah uh, of Tariq Mitzvahs relate to magic? Do you know? So what I was really doing is getting an entree. I'm entering his world. He likes Harry Potter. It's all about magic. Oh, so do you know that the Torah has something to say about magic? And what are those mitzvahs? Oh, mechashefer lo techaye. What's the chiyuv of skila uh, for, for someone who does magic? You know, there's serious consequences for uh, certain avarahs. And so I said, you know what? We could learn some of the Tariq mitzvahs and then figure out on the margin of your book uh, what we could say is the Aveira that's being done in this particular uh, paragraph or chapter. Um, so I'm just giving you an example where you can enter the child's mind. Now that's a very unique type of case, but if you've got a kid who loves animals, 
Great. Let's go through tag mitzvahs and figure out which mitzvahs relate to animals. Actually, 187. I had one kid who wanted to know anything about animals. I said, well, there's tons of mitzvahs in the Torah about animals. So the kid might not be showing much interest in learning, but if you show interest in what he does have interest in, there's such an easy way to turn that around Alpi Darkai, go through the entrance of the mind of the child and deliver Tariq mitzvahs pertaining to animals. There's all the mitzvahs of Karbanas, there's uh, Kalayim with animals, there's Machalas Asurais, there's so many mitzvahs. Uh, there's uh, uh, Reishas Hages, there's Tzitzit, which is Talay on wool that you're getting from the, the lamb, etc. There's, there's so many mitzvahs, Basa Machalab, there's so many mitzvahs when you start thinking about it, they're either directly or indirectly related to. Uh, any specific area, in this case animals. Uh, you've got a kid who loves baking. Great, let's figure out all the mitzvahs which have to do with baking and start learning more and more detail about lechem apanim or minchas or minchas chayta or any one of the five menachas. It doesn't matter which, which, it can be music, it can be weapons. It almost doesn't really make any difference. Tag mitzvahs touches on everything and anything. So the more mitzvahs the children are exposed to, the more you can do what I'm calling in number nine over here is matrixing, miscellaneous matrixing of mitzvahs. So um, mitzvahs bein adam lechavera, you can make two piles. Mitzvahs adam bein chavera, mitzvahs adam lemakayim. Bein adam lemakayim. Uh, you could make a pile of mitzvahs which you um, have identified are chukim or mishpatim or some, some mitzvahs are called uh, mitzvahs of edus, they're giving testimony for something. So you can categorize the mitzvahs. There's, there's so many things you can do with tariq mitzvahs that once, once the children are learning a lot, a couple of hundred, 300, 400, eventually all 600 and 13, there's so many ways you can categorize the mitzvahs even beyond the classic ways of Sefer Chinuch and Sefer HaMitzvahs of the Rambam, Asei Loita Asei, and of course the Rambam that we're doing, which is a categorization based on the 14 books and 83 subsections. As another example, you could make a pile of all the mitzvahs which are only Nagea to Nashim. The girls in Beis Yaakov might uh, want to do that, or all the mitzvahs which are only Nagea to Anashim, to men. If you've got any Kohanim or Levim in the classroom, Hey, let's make a pile of the mitzvahs which are only in the to Khanim or Shevet Levi. If you've got a kid who loves clothes or his father is in the, in, in the clothing business, hey, let's, let's identify all the mitzvahs and tag mitzvahs which have to do with clothing. Just go with the interest of the child. Um, you've got a kid who loves trees and plants and flowers. Great, let's see which mitzvahs relate directly and indirectly to Anything that grows from the ground, plants, trees, flowers. Oh, you've got dyeing that comes from plants. Oh, you've got a shera tree. Oh, you're not allowed to destroy um, any tree at the time of war. We learn the Isra Baal Tashkas from that, even when it's not a time of war to destroy a tree, fruit bearing tree. There's so many mitzvahs that once you're identifying what the interest of the child is, we can just simply learn about it. Uh, you can have um, mitzvahs that are Tali Be'eret Yisrael, or mitzvahs that uh, that uh, can only be done in Israel, mitzvahs that can only be done in Yerushalayim, make, make a pile of those mitzvahs. So you've got the kids going through the Tariq mitzvahs and doing Chazara while they're trying to figure out, oh yeah, which mitzvah does this belong to? They've selected the category already and now they're looking for the mitzvahs that relate to that category. The Kotairas, hey, that comes from flowers as well and different plants. Uh, so there's so many ways to start realizing how Tariq mitzvahs touches everything. The last couple of items I would add to the miscellaneous matrixes is uh, food, anything to do with food. There's lots of mitzvahs to do with food. All the machalas, asurais, chametz, the mincha offering, there's the eating that the kohanim had to do of the shlamim. There's lots of mitzvahs in the gear to food. Then you could also look for um, any mitzvah which is only bizman hazeh. So it happens to be in Sefer Mitzvahs a Katzer of the Chafetz Chaim, he identified 279 mitzvahs which still relate only today out of the 613. So we can have the children try to identify themselves through Tariq mitzvahs and then check it out against the list of, of the Chafetz Chaim. Uh, the last category I would look at is the the mitzvahs tamidias, the mitzvahs which are constant or consistent, constant. Um, so even though famously there's six, but if you look much more carefully, you will, you will recognize actually there's about 30, literally. There are about 30 mitzvahs which apply every single second of one's life. Um, we've got a listing of that. In fact, if you, if you call us um, for any list of any subject, 
uh, we'll give you a master list. So if you want a list of, let's say, wherever Shemon Zayas is mentioned in the entire mitzvahs, so we'll give you a list of every single mitzvah relating to, to olive oil, uh, to baking, to food, to clothing, to animals. Uh, you can do it yourself, but we, we're able to do that if, if you ask us to. Give us uh, uh, like 20 minutes or so to quickly do it, and we'll get it out to you ASAP, and then you'll have your master list to compare the children's findings and research their own exploration against this master list. Um, and uh, this is something that you can make a, a project where children are identifying specific hobbies or areas that they enjoy, and then figure out which tag mitzvahs apply to this. Um, it just came to mind as I'm speaking, you could, you could even ask the children, let's figure out in recess, how many tag mitzvahs apply to recess? Ask the children, uh, does the mitzvah of not bearing grudge, remembering other people's mistakes, does that apply to recess? Lotitor. Okay, good. Uh, how about Nakama, taking revenge? Does that, yeah, Lotikaim. Okay. Um, how about mitzvah of Rechilus, Lotelech um, Rachil, Be'amecha, don't speak Lashon Hara, uh, or gossip? Oh, yeah, that, that applies to recess. How about Enos Dvarim, hurting people with words? Does that apply in recess? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moitzi Shemra. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Sinat Chinam. Oh, my gosh. Avash Yisrael. You start identifying which can you do chesed can you do avas yisrael in recess what are examples of that and get the kids really thinking and talking about tarag mitzvahs that apply in their everyday life talk about what what mitzvahs apply when i go home what what mitzvahs apply on the bus there's so many ways that you can help the kids because they're learning tarag mitzvahs they're now getting inside their brain all these files that they can now cross-reference you want to, mitzvahs of baking, clothing, animals, recess. There's nothing it doesn't touch because tarik mitzvahs is the whole, is the skeleton of kala terakula. Okay, so that's number nine, ready for number 10. Okay, so number 10 of this is get the kids to make their own tarik mitzvah cards. Take an index card and have them draw their own mitzvah. They can use the stick figures as a platform for figure out how to draw it, but let them do their own cards. I want to show you what I had in my, in my first grade. Uh, this was actually a six-year-old. His name was Tuvia. So I'm going to lay out some of these. Here's the mitzvah of Don't Steal. He had to be very, very good at art. Uh, you can see in the very corner, you see an X. It's a loitase. And he's, he's put in very small, a little lady and a little man. So that tells me it's applicable to men and women. And here you see a bandit, a robber with money, obviously stolen from this other Jew. He even wrote at the top, do not steal. So that's a six-year-old. I'm going to show you some other mitzvahs he did. Here you have the mitzvah of Sreyfus Chametz. You can actually see over here it says an ase. It's applicable to men and ladies. Over here is made fire and some wood, I guess. There you see a piece of bread being thrown and a loaf of bread over there. There's the father, I guess that's the son, and they're doing it together. Here's the mitzvah of Avas Hager. Here you see an ase. It's um, applicable to men and ladies. And you have steps going down into a mikveh. And you see here, someone is almost toveling in the mikveh. And on top he wrote Ger. And over here you see the bubble, uh, um, thought bubble with a heart inside. So he's showing his Ava towards this Ger who is becoming Jewish as he tovels in the mikveh. Here's actually done the mitzvah Puravu, where you see a father, a mother, and son and daughter. It's an Ase. And she's, he's put here, it's applicable to men and ladies. So most won't agree with that, but there are Roshonim who actually say it's applicable to, to uh, Nashim as well. I wouldn't have corrected him on that anyway. Um, that's for the, to discuss in much greater detail later on. Here you have a Talmud Hakam, and here's a boy who's standing up. He wrote, stand up. Um, so you see he got up from his chair. It's an assay. It's applicable to men and ladies. Oh, this is a cute one. Here's an assay, and it says, help load. So you see a Jew helping load the donkey or animal of, of a fellow Jew. And here it says help unload. So the same idea, very artistic. He wrote down there as an assay. This is cute. Here you see the, someone with a crown and he's writing something and it's being added to these scrolls over here which will be attached to 
the Amudim over here. So this is actually the mitzvah of a king to write a Sefer Torah. This is a six-year-old's rendering, and you see it's only a, for men, and it's an assay. Oh, look closely, you'll see he's covering his eyes, and in the speech bubble it's saying Shema. Say the Shema. And there you've got an assay. He put for men and women. It's only for men. I'm just showing you examples of what children are capable of. This is a six-year-old turning seven who's in first grade. Return stolen property. Here's something different. Here, I actually asked him, Toby, what are you doing? He said, I'm bunching the mitzvahs. He was taking small pictures of the tag mitzvahs that we had at the time, and he putting them all on one card. So over here you have a nazir, this is a person with long hair, and an X going through the bottle of wine, and then the, and then the grapes, and then you see there's a pair of scissors with an X across it. He mustn't cut his hair. Uh, and here he is bringing a carbon to base on Mikdash. Here is, he is in, inside an oil with a dead body. Mustn't eat raisins and mustn't eat grapes, uh, grape seeds. So there he was bunching the mitzvahs. Oh, and that's when I told him, oh, Tuvia, you know what? That's what the Rambam did. He bunched the mitzvahs. He took mitzvahs that you're not allowed to do on Yom Tov, any one of the 39 malachas. Here's Shabbos, Yom Kippur, and then uh, this is for Sukkot. Sorry, there's Sukkot. Sorry, that's Pesach, Shavuos, and, and uh, that's Sukkot. Um, you see the 39 minus sign means it's 39 malachas minus those which you are allowed to do on Yom Tov. So he was bunching these mitzvahs together. These are mitzvahs that bunched together of a Kohen Gadol. <laughs> he did Yibam, this is a six-year-old. The mitzvah of ksuba, and not to marry without a ksuba, leishev basukah, to live in a sukkah for seven days. Uh, Gidonosha, <laughs> here's Gidonosha, that's cute. Uh, he wrote the word Gid over there and pointed towards the back legs. And here is, I guess this is also the mitzvah of Pruvu again. Here's the building of a base on Mikdash. You can see he made the Heichal, the Mizbeach, and the Ezra Snashim, Kiddush HaChodesh, two Edim. Partial moon, go to Bastin, and this I think I wrote for him, Heir of Pesach, but he actually made the drawing himself. You see here, it's after Chat Sais. Here's his rendering of a lamb, and someone's about to shech the lamb, the Korban Pesach. So it's such a great thing for a kid themselves to realize, oh, I can do this, and they're starting to put their own information. But once they own it, they do it themselves, it belongs to them. They're the ones who created it. So there's a direct relationship with the mitzvah because all year day, it's through their hands that they're having a relationship with the mitzvah. 10.1, similar to this, is let them write their own book. Here's a first grader, the mitzvah de Raisa of Emunah in Hashem. Here's the mitzvah of Zulasai. That's what she did for Zulasai. Avas Hashem. Uh, Yiras Hashem. That's a telescope. And this, was, this is meant to be Kiddush, uh, Kiddush Hashem. Any one of the 248 mitzvahs you do is a Kiddush Hashem. Any one of the 365 don'ts, that's an, a minus sign. That's a Chil Hashem. Very neat handwriting for first grader. Don't make a bris with the seven nations that you're forbidden to uh, allow to live in Eretz Yisrael. And here is... Don't have a uh, chain for a mesis. Don't save their life. So you see they're throwing a, a rubber ring and someone is drowning over there. These are taken from the target mitzvah stick pictures. Kids are capable of this. And now they're having a relationship with the mitzvah themselves. Here's a mitzvah of mezuzah. These are ways for kids to really get into the tag mitzvahs themselves and use the tarot pictures as a platform for doing it on their own. So that's 10.1. 10.2, they can turn these cards into a book, or they can turn it into a banner. They could paste those mitzvahs or tape together the mitzvahs which belong together as sections, as this Tuvi over here put them on cards uh, on very small little pictures. There's a little bit of creativity. You can really get the kids doing a lot on their own at a time when they're young, creative, and expressing their own talent. In this case, you've got a talented child who's got excellent hand-eye coordination and uh, pincer skills with these tiny muscles in his fingers. Okay, we're ready for number 11. Okay, so number 11. Rabbi Simcha Cohen in Philadelphia uh, has the training of all the time, which is in most of the building blocks. So he sent me a fantastic game that he plays with um, his children for Tag Mitzvahs, where he has a timer. He tells the kids to pair themselves up into pairs, 
and then he sets the timer for two minutes. They now have two minutes, announce a mitzvah, let's say it's a mitzvah to live in a sukkah for seven days. And for the next two minutes, they have to write down a list of every detail they know about that mitzvah. When the buzzer goes at two minutes, he then goes around the class and each pair uh, will read out one to two items that they wrote. The Rebbe writes them down on the board and if there's any repetition, so the Rebbe will maybe just put a check so that others also got the same detail. But at the end, they will count up all the details that the kids accumulated together. So uh, one kid might know, based on the learning of Tarek Mitzvahs, it's in Parshish Emmer, uh, Perek Haf Gimel. Uh, so that would be two separate details. Um, another kid might say, well, there's Chach and there's at least uh, three walls. Um, that another kid might say you have to eat and sleep and drink uh, for seven days in, that, in the sukkah. So even though the mitzvah was to live in the sukkah seven days, so he added some more details. So the more details they come up with, that's how many points that are going to be on the board. And then the Rebbe will, appoint, will award the class as many points as the number of details that the class accumulatively came up with. And those points will add up over the days and the weeks for either a class trip or a class seum or it might be a special prize of some sort where uh, the kids would, would have a pizza or ice cream party, uh, all based on how many points they have to get, a thousand points, whatever it would be, to be able to get that party or that trip. So that's a great way for the kids to be brainstorming between them how many details they can remember from the Tariq Mitzvahs. Another application of this would be a child will call out a pasuk to his partner and the partner has to tell that child which mitzvah it is. So it should do like five to ten mitzvahs at a time. We did cover this actually but I'm mentioning it here over as well. Um, if they're really at a higher level of let's say doing uh, the memory system so a kid could call out the, any mitzvah that, of the ones that they've done and his partner has to tell him which perek of, and which parsha of the Chumash that mitzvah is found in. If they've done the memory system for that they can go to that level. Number 12 of this is you compare the students uh, together, pair them off and have them read together Bechavrusa, let's say up to five of the which mitzvah am I mitzvahs in the Tariq Detective and then after that they quiz each other to come up with three items on any one of those five mitzvahs. Then if they're going to do another round they have to say another three until they exhaust all the number of details that they know of each mitzvah. So this can be done as preparation for when the class as in, in small groups will have that two minute timer where the Rebbe reads out one mitzvah and all the kids will start writing ferociously all the details they can think of in the next two minutes. So this will be a very good activity in preparation for that where the kids are uh, practicing between each other. Bechavrusa, the which mitzvah am I cards where they're covering lots of details in those clues and that'll be preparation for your two minute game. Number 13 of this is memorizing tag mitzvahs according to where each mitzvah appears in the Torah. We've called this mental mapping or mental palaces. We have talked about this in the memory system, so I just want to touch on it fast over here because it really is in the other building block of memorization. But the idea really is that since your brain has a mental picture of your bedroom, your kitchen and your house, uh, the layout probably of the entire school, depending on the size of your school, there are many places that your brain is so familiar with that you can close your eyes and actually describe in sequence the entrance to that building and sequentially describe what you're encountering as you turn to the left, what's next, what's next, what's next. And because you've got these maps of places in your brain, those are locations that you can now associate with the mitzvahs of the Torah. So you can take mitzvahs in Pere Yud base in Dvarim. And if you've got a mental picture of your particular room in your house or your school, you'll encounter each mitzvah as you walk through that room and place that mitzvah accordingly with 
that item in that room. That's called mental mapping, mental palaces. So you'll go through the midst of not destroying Hashem's name, coming to the base of Mikdash with all the Korbanas, the Korban Oila is in Perak Yud base, the Eva Minachai is in Yud base. There's uh, a lot of mitzvahs taking place in Perak Yud base, which if you've mentally mapped out where each mitzvah is in a specific room that you're very familiar with, you can easily go to that room in your mind and read off where those mitzvahs are in your brain and you've assigned that room as Perak Yud Base. I'm just giving you that as a, a sample. So that's called mental mapping. If you need more information about that, you'll see it on memory systems, uh, building block number six. You've got a knowledge map, which I told you about. You can use that for both mental mapping, mental palaces, and you can also use it for memorizing tag mitzvahs as they appear in Rambam. I didn't mention in full detail, but in your manual, you have the mitzvahs bunched. Do you remember I told you about bunching? So you've got the first three mitzvahs bunched together. They kind of go together. The mitzvah of Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, the mitzvah of Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, they're twins. Uh, Kiddush Hashem and Chil Hashem, oh, those are twins. Uh, destroying Hashem's name, you might want to add it to Chil Hashem. And the last two have to do with the Navi Emes, Lishmoya, listen to the Navi Emes, Vershaloil Nasoisoi, and not to over test the Navi Emes. So those two go together as well. You'll notice that throughout the entire manual, all the mitzvahs under each section have been bunched. Uh, what's the basis of that? So I actually based it on Rambam uh, in his Hagdama, where he says he has divided the mitzvahs into Halichas Halichas uh, in a way that you can memorize them. So I found that interesting because in the research done on how the brain works in terms of retaining information, there's a fascinating uh, conclusion that the average brain is able to remember without any system. They're able to remember uh, up to three items without any system. The average brain can do that up to even five, between three and five. After five, between five and eight, the average person cannot remember all five to eight items in sequence without a system. After eight, almost everybody must have a system because uh, that's how our memories are, not very good. So we've touched on this in the memory system, building block number six, where we, we have explained that there really is no such thing as a good or a bad memory. There's such a thing as a trained or untrained memory. And you can actually train your brain to retain much more information. It's a muscle like any other part of your body that if you flex it and exercise it, actually gets better. So interestingly, in my research on the subject of how the brain works in terms of memorizing information, it comes out that the very reason why phone numbers internationally are divided up into groups of maximum of four digits at a time, but mostly in groups of three, three and four. The reason why is for this very reason, that it makes it much easier for the brain to memorize someone's phone number because it's bunched in groups of three, three and then four because the average mind can hold up to three items in sequence without a system. Now you do that to another three, your brain can handle these three are almost in their own isolation. Now I'll add another three. Now I'll add another three or four. So that's how the phone numbers are actually designed. I found that very interesting because I said to myself, let, let me now go through Tyragmitzas of the Rambam and see if I can notice a pattern where he almost never will bunch more than five items together. And uh, interestingly enough, when I went through Rambam's Tarek Mitzvahs, I noticed, oh my gosh, very rarely is there five or more items. Over here you actually do have, in the case of a Nazir, you have nine, the five items he can't drink or eat or consume. Yayin, Anavim, Smukim, Chartsanim and Zagim. Uh, those five are all together, but they're very closely connected, associated. It's so interesting when you start going through the entire Rambam, very rarely will you have it uh, for five items. I think only once it was six, that's by a Mesis, but they're easy because they're so closely associated. The vast majority are in twins or threes, groups of two or three. So I said, that's interesting because what would happen if you only teach the children to remember two new mitzvahs every day or three? And the next day you review the ones they know in groups, in these bunches, and then add on another two or three. So in this way, sequentially over the weeks and months, the children will gradually memorize 
all Tariq mitzvahs this way. Once they know the Tariq mitzvah code names for 613 mitzvahs, it takes a few minutes to Chaza to quickly review from Amunah all the way to the dinim of Yafis Torah, the last three mitzvahs of Tariq mitzvahs as listed in the Rambam. So these are, these are simple methods to get the kids engaged in doing the learning themselves. So by using this manual in that way, this is the large version for the teachers, you've got the students version, the student edition, which is much smaller and easier for the child to handle. But that's called, I call it bunching, um, and it has to do with mental palacing. That's one way to remember where the mitzvahs are in the Torah, but you can also sequentially rem uh, memorize them simply by bunching them in twos or threes, fours and five max. Very rarely are they in bunches of five. So uh, I think actually over a matter of just a few months for a third, fourth grade, for sure you can, you can learn all Tariq Mitzvahs this way. Uh, for first graders, they can learn at least 200 to 300 in first grade and um, finish them off in second, third grade max, absolute max. Okay, we're up to number 14. There's a photo version, which I can just touch on very briefly, even though there's a lot to say about it. We looked at this very briefly before. You've got 613 mitzvahs in the photo version. Here's the first one in the section of Sefer Ava, and it's Hilchus Kriyachma. Obviously, you can see the gentleman who is reciting Kriyachma. And you've got the icon for Ava over here. This is the icon for Hilchus Kriyachma. It's an ase and applies only to men. Here's the English description. Say the Shema every morning and night. And then Uvshoch Bahuv Kamecha is the Pasuk. And then Dvarim, Perek Vav, Pasuk Zayin in Dvarim, in Parshas Ve'ezchanan. So actually all of these are an Asay. If you had an Loit Asay, you'd also have an icon for which Oynish there is. Whether it's Malkus, or one of the Misas based in, or Misa B'day Shemaim, or Kares. Um, if it's a mitzvah that is Tali Ba'aretz, you'll see an icon of Eretz Yisrael. If it's Tali, if it depends on, on doing it in Yerushalayim, you'll see there a icon for Yerushalayim. Uh, if it's only for Kahanim, you'll see it's an, there's an icon for Kahanim. If it's an Asay, it will be a green icon. If it's a Loit Asay, it will be a red icon. So these cards are fantastic. That's my personal opinion. Um, Rabbi Skase, Rabbi Sheffel Skase designed them for me. Um, if you put them inside an envelope and make a hole in the, in the envelope as a window, so that the only thing that's showing is the actual picture of the mitzvah. Now what the child has to do from memory is write around the envelope, the icons and the information that is related to that mitzvah, whether it's the pasuk, where the pasuk is, the English translation. It doesn't have to be word for word, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the, the Pasuk should. Um, and of course, if it's an Asse, it just has to make a check, or Loit Asse, make an X. And if it's Nagea to men, uh, you can put an M for men and an L for ladies. And if he knows the icons, he should put at least the icon of the actual safe itself. Then he pulls the card out of the envelope and sees how many or how much of it he actually got right. So these are, are very simple ways where you can have children um, learn incremental details and levels of detail in the Tariag mitzvahs. Going to, and remember you've got 613 of these, so you can get the kids busy for a long time. That's the photo version. And the last item I will share with you is really going over some of the other supporting materials which are created elsewhere that can really help. So here's a book on the six constant mitzvahs. It's written by Rabbi Mordechai Plaut. It's excellent, it's very popular. Uh, and this is child friendly. You have a series, about eight volumes, I believe, on Tariag Tales. It's published by uh, Torah Chaim. I believe that's a, a subsection of Kahas Publishing. It's also very endearing, lots of stories for every single one of the Tariag Mitzvahs. That's why it's eight volumes. Uh, there's another excellent book. This is by Rabbi Jack Abramowitz. It's quite comprehensive, not so much for the children, but it's extra information. If you've got a kid who wants to do more research, then go for it. And certainly it's helpful for the Rebbe as well. It's called The Taria Companion. It's excellent. Oh, here's The Chayrev by Rabbi Shamshul Rafil Hirsch. Really, really good. This is more for the Rebbe as a resource. It's, it's very intellectual and very stimulating. Lots of Tamiya mitzvahs, explanation, hashkafa. Uh, very, very valuable. And then you have this book here. There's a few of them. 
uh, that came out from the Tariag Foundation. I used to be a consultant for them. They're, they're, right now they're not in um, functioning, but hopefully they will get back as soon as they got their money together. Um, it's called the Encyclopedia of the Tariag Mitzvot. And this one is on the Seres Dibris, and they've got another one on the mitzvahs which uh, relate to the Mayadim, the Jewish calendar. Uh, excellent resource, a lot of detail, tons and tons of detail. I mentioned earlier the Yahadut, I'm not going to show you that again, but you've already seen it. Sefer Haredim, and then there's a kit of Sefer Haredim. So these are, are really good resources for the Rebbe, and to some extent, if the children are really enough of Yudeh Sefer, they can actually study um, the Kitzah because it's, it's just a very brief description for every single mitzvah. Rabbi Bluth of um, is a Musmach from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein Hatzal. Rabbi Bluth wrote um, a contrast here, but more of a contrast, a Sefer. It's called Hanukh Lenar, and it's really a liquid from three Sforim. Number one, it's the Sefer of the of Poel Tzedek, of the Shach. Um, who wrote all the Tariag Mitzvah Psukim and divide them into the days of the week with the recommendation, this is the Shachon on Shulchan Aruch, that every Jew should know Tariag Mitzvah's uh, Baal Peh by reading and chazering this every single week. So he wrote out the whole, he reprinted the Sefer of the Poel Tzedek of the Shach. He also wrote a commentary uh, called Heilich Tamim and Doiva Emes where he's got a Kitzah of Sefer HaChinuch in terms of the shrashim, the hashkafa behind each mitzvah, and also he's got a kitz of Sefer Chinuch in the dinim. So this is from Rabbi Bluth, uh, a very worthwhile sefer to have in the classroom, or for, at least for the Rebbe. And here's a kitz of uh, Sefer Chinuch. It really is a kitz. Uh, you've got literally here's the number of the mitzvah, the description of the mitzvah, the pasuk and the Shoresh. Very, very, very brief. A couple of dinim sometimes, sometimes a bit more of the Hashkafa, like over here. Um, but this is, it's Menukad, so it's actually very easy if the children are starting to really get into Tariq Mitzvahs, it's a great resource for them to start learning on their own. That's pretty much it. There's a lot of other swarm you can get, the, the Smug, and there's a, a, a number of other swarm on Tariq Mitzvahs. But, but uh, without overloading you, uh, this really should be enough to set the kids on a journey of mastering Tariq Mitzvahs, and in doing so, relating to the world at every level, whatever they're experiencing relates to Tariq Mitzvahs. So you're really giving them a tremendous foundation for them to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to connect to his Torah, to love his Torah, to take his Torah wherever he goes, never forget his Torah, and literally live the Torah through Tag Mitzvahs. Ur item and you shall see it in reference to the Tcheles, but Chazal say it's really also referring to Kodesh Baruch Hu. And how will you be able to do that? Leman tiskru et kol mitzvah You know why? You're going to look at my tzitzit, and you're going to see a Kodesh Baruch Hu. You know how? By remembering all my mitzvahs. It's through my mitzvahs. It's for the sake of knowing my mitzvahs that you're going to be able to ur isim, I say. You're going to have a relationship directly with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. You'll see him yourself. The second your neshama goes back and reunites. And Ashrei Mishabala Lakan v'talmud abiyadu. Happy is the one who comes here in Olam Emes, And his learning is in his hands. He's got Tariq Mitzvahs, which is the skeletal foundation of all future learning. In the merit of our children knowing Tariq Mitzvahs, we should all be zoicha to see much nachas from all of them. Adbias, Gola, Mashiach, coming soon. Bimheira, Amen.